This lecture starts the discussion about the contents of a business plan, what is in a business plan, and how one organizes that. Um, this particular one is the overview discussion where we'll talk about how one develops and what one puts in all the various sections without going into very much detail about any one section. There'll be follow-on lectures that go into detail about the various sections. The important thing about the business plan as you think about developing it, I do not like giving a template or an online program or anything. When something like that comes, people realize that what's being done is somebody essentially filled the boxes in. And there might be some interesting information in there, but it doesn't really tell you much about the business, the team, how they think about their business, what their opportunity and their excitement and their passion is. However, when you take time and develop a plan that quite specifically captures and communicates your vision of the excitement and the passion and the opportunity that your business presents it presents to you, your team, investors, and other partners, then somebody can be excited about looking at the plan and it becomes a really good way for them to begin to understand what it is you offer and potentially for them to become part of it, either by giving money or becoming a member of the team, something like that, right? So this is all very important, but one size doesn't fit all, and the more you capture all the information that's needed, but in a way that really shows your passion and zeal for your opportunity, that's how a winning business plan is presented, and that's how it's received, all right? So let's talk about what needs to be in the various parts of the business plan. It always starts, or usually starts, it should start, I want it to start with an executive summary. And we'll talk more about that. But remember, it is not an introduction. It is a summary of the whole plan. All of the key salient points that you talk about in the plan that you want someone to understand should be in the executive summary, including the management team, including the marketing, including the product description. You don't just do a 40,000 foot view of the business and then move on. No, you put it all there so someone can actually scan the executive summary and have a pretty good idea of the opportunity. They go to the various sections as they want to understand maybe your marketing plan or your financials or your operations or your management team a little bit better, but it's all in the executive summary and we'll come back to that. Then you talk about the company in general. You want a general description. This is the things like uh, the, the, the name of your company, the full name of your company, how it's incorporated, that sort of thing but also what its mission is, what you're trying to accomplish, kinds of customers you're going after, uh, what your products and services are likely to be, maybe a little bit of history, all of that sort of thing, okay? Then you talk about your products and your services, what it is you're actually offering. Uh, these, the, 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 organ, the, the order of this can be changed and rearranged, but usually if somebody thinks of a business, they think of the business as a, a series of products or services, and so that's what you want to develop and talk about and, and, and go through next. Then there's a, pro, a part that talks about the markets, who's going to buy this, how big they are, um, and we'll talk more about that also, but how big they are and uh, who the likely customers are, how they're fast they're growing, how much market share you're planning on gathering, how you're going to get to the market, your marketing plan. Operations and production, you go into talking about what your business actually looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, what people are doing, how, uh, how many people there are, what the skill sets are, um, how, how you're getting the product developed, if it's not developed, how it's being designed, how it's being manufactured, implemented, um, how if it's a service, how that's delivered, uh, what the costs associated with that are, there's, there's financials um, mixed in through here. You talk about your management, who's on the team, um, and your organization, if you have other employees and if they're located in different places or if you have a contractor doing certain kinds of maybe software development or you're using some contracting for some marketing activities or for, or for doing uh, market studies or focus groups. The various pieces of your organization, how that fits in. Then you talk about your capitalization and your structure, who owns the company. Capitalization means who has invested so far. In many cases, if it's a startup business, it's going to be the founders and they might have put some of their own capital in there, either actual money that they've bought in or some sweat capital by not taking a salary for a period of time. Um, 
go into your financials and we'll have more discussion about those as well. Uh, but you always have an income statement and a balance sheet and cash flow for a number of years until your business starts looking like you want it to ultimately be for harvest. If you can do that in three years, a three-year plan is enough. If it takes you four, that's fine. If it takes you five, that's fine. Even if it takes you longer than that, if it takes a while to get started and to turn the corner, then you might need to have a longer-term business plan. Keeping in mind, people realize the further out, the less probability there is that it will that, that that sort of thing will actually happen as planned. Then you talk about milestones. We'll have more discussion about milestones as well. But essentially, these are the key things that once they're accomplished, the business is no longer as risky as it was. In other words, you need to design a product that can meet certain costs and quality targets. That's something in the future when it's in the plan. A milestone is once that's achieved, you know it can be done, the product works, people like it, and you can do it at a certain cost. That risk is no longer there that you can't do that. So you're taking risk out of the business with each milestone that you achieve. Other information is put in appendixes. That is, you might say how many, um, you might have done some market research, you've got some web, <clears throat> web based information about your products or, your, or the demographics or whatever. You can put those in appendices. Additional financial schedules and notes might be in appendices. Uh, you don't have the complete detailed financials in your business plan per se. You need some, but in the appendix, you have a uh, full set of financial statements. Um, multiple years, drill down schedules, and we'll talk more about that as well. The appendix is where you can put a lot of backup information also like, uh, like individual resumes for the management team, um, maybe some additional, if you're filing for patents, some patent information, that sort of thing, right? Generally, the overall plan, all in, maybe with, as long if you have appendices and like that, like 40-ish pages, but the written part, generally somewhere around 20 pages, 15 to 20 pages of material that someone can read, keeping in mind that if you're too high level, you know, you're not going to convince someone that you're serious. So generally, you refer to information of more detail in the appendices. Okay, that's the sort of thing that you're going after as you develop your business plan. Uh, from here, we'll go into a series of lectures where we talk about these various sections and what should be included in each of those sections. So I will look forward to that and we'll talk next about the executive summary and we'll see you on the lecture where we go into a little bit about the executive summary.